Hey guys, this is Pestoli bringing you an intro guide for the new players or people who want to find out more information on the customs map. So let's get started on spawns. So for the custom spawn side, there's about eight or nine locations you can spawn. For starting out on customs, this is probably the safer side to spawn on because there's less choke points. However, you need to be wary of other people understanding where all the spawns are as they may try and rush you. If you spawn close to the river, I advise trying to rush over to the other side, getting on the construction side, which will give you the advantage facing back towards some spawn locations. Otherwise, you could push through into construction and start clearing scavs. Another option is to rush to the dorms. You can get first dibs on some of the loot locations there, which I'll explain later. If you don't spawn close to the river, you need to be a lot more wearier trying to push forward towards construction and dorms. Moving on to baller tank spawns. From this side, there's three main choke points that you need to be cautious of. There's a holes in the wall going to checkpoint. There's a gate heading over to the other warehouse area. And lastly, there's the ramp that jumps over the fence, which goes over towards the other warehouse area. I'll go into more detail later about the holes in the walls for the checkpoint area, but effectively if you want to spawn on this side, you need to be prepared to get into PvP contact straight away and fight yourself out of the area and then you can move on to either the gas station exit for scav kills or up to the dorms. So moving on to the exits. The first exit for the custom side spawn location is the gas station exit. This exit is only available if there's green smoke outside the building and you need to be prepared to take on four to five scavs in this area. The next exit is the ZB1012 exit. This exit is a tunnel that leads underground and is only available if the white light is on. This exit is quite close to the gas station exit. The final exit for the custom side spawn is the ZB1011 exit and is always available if spawning on that side. This exit is located in the far corner of the map and is a tunnel that leads underground. The first exit you have available for the boiler side spawn to the map is the smuggler's boat. The smuggler's boat will be located right next to the river, furthest to the north. And if it is there, you'll see a small boat and a campfire that is lit. The next exit we have available is the RUAF roadblock. If this exit is available, a white light will be illuminated and this exit is closely located to construction at the very south of the river. The next exit we have is Crossroads, which is located in the northwest of the custom spawn side. This exit is always available, however, there's little cover unless you go around the corner. The last exit available for the baller spawn side is the trail park exit. This exit is always available and is located at the southwest side of the, of the custom spawn. The thing to know about these last two exits is by the time you get there, generally there's scabs started to spawn and you need to be wary of that. Moving on to loot locations. The first point to note is the factory key spawns. The first one is located in a warehouse in the baller side spawns on the bottom shelf of the cabinet. And the second is located in dorm security office on the table. If you can get to one of these locations early in the game, you should always check to see if the key is there. Next, we have the gas station exit. On the table inside the cabin, I've found most items in the game, including pistol cases, as well as out the back, behind the blue fence, there's a medical bag, and also inside the van at the front of the area, you can find weapons and other modification items. There's also a green ca uh, weapons crate, which you can loot. Lastly, there's also scabs here to kill, which you can get loot on. Next we have the gas station in the middle of the map. There's a green weapons crate outside, as well as inside there's multiple rooms you can loot, particularly if you've got the keys for the office, there's a safe inside, as well as there's four cash registers, which can get you rubles, dollars and euros. Next we have the red warehouse, which is located on the custom spawn side. There's two cabins on the outside, which both have filing cabinets in it, which are great for keys, as well as inside the red warehouse, there's a green weapons crate, and also some offices, which will require the customs key to get inside, However, there's three computers, a duffel bag, a shirt, and also a safe. So look out for a customs key as this will help very early on, as well as a quest is required inside there. Next, we have the marked room, which is located in the three-story dorm in room 318. You require the marked room key, so it's important to loot all the scavs backpacks that you find, as well as filing cabinets, as this spot can have any loot in the game, including rare items like key rings. I've deliberately left out all the other rooms of dorms, as I'm going to make a separate video detailing all the safe rooms and the best route to get through the dorms quickly and get the maximum profit. So moving on to danger areas. First we have the checkpoint wall. There's two holes leading into checkpoint from the warehouse area. When people spawn on the checkpoint side, they generally camp these holes as they're massive choke points for people coming out of the warehouse area and vice versa, people spawning on the checkpoint side going across to the warehouse side. So it's very dangerous to go in through these holes early on in the game. So be careful about going into these holes, as well as you can also go up on hills to see over the wall and see if it's being camped on the other side from high points or vantage points. Next we have construction. Most people that spawn on the custom side of the map 
will try and charge towards construction as they can get some quick early scav kills for their task as well as that get to the high point so they can see over the wall and pick off players as coming over the bridge. If you're new to the game try to learn about how people take advantage of these high points and if you can find other spots you can actually pick these people off early. As well as if you hear people firing in this area you can try to flank them and get in front of them and pick them off as they move towards the bus station. Or better yet, come up behind while they're still in contact and kill them then. A lot of people have figured out that charging the office in the red warehouse as a hatchling is a good way to make quick coin. And other PMCs have picked up on this and so now the red warehouse comes an early contact zone. So if you're not ready to fight, it's probably good to avoid red warehouse and head somewhere else early on. However, if you like contact like myself, it's a good place to start practicing how to fight people in a more open environment. Next we have dorms. Most geared people that go into customs will go to dorms to try and get all the best loot they can from all the safes and the marked room. If you're heading into dorms, you have to be prepared for contact. Unless you're going as a hatchling and you're ready to die and you're just trying to get your best thing you can from the marked room. In my next customs video, I'm going to give advanced strategies and tactics for fighting on customs as well as where to avoid getting into choke positions and how to get the best out of all your situations when on customs map. So keep an eye out for that video. So thanks for watching another video, I hope this has been helpful. Please let me know if there's anything extra you'd like in other videos, including the new player videos, as I'm willing to update them in the future. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for future content, and I'll see you next time.